55. So that's pretty impressive. I think I think you need to update your total from from 51 to 55. That's. I want to give you like a slow clap because this is amazing, <laughs> right? Let's give them a slow, slow. Such films as a U, built, day to day, healthcare, design conference, um, a whole bunch of different conferences. Who's been to one of my presentations before? If it was today, then you can still raise your hand. Yes, okay, well, okay, uh, quite a few. Um, so usually I give something away. This one's a bit more spontaneous, so I've got nothing to give away this time. Um, but I'm actually going to change it up. I'm not going to give today's presentation. I'm going to give. Um, uh, my day-to-day -day at Toronto presentation. I don't think anybody's seen that. Has anybody seen that? Was anybody there in Toronto for build or pre-conference day-to-day? Yes, that's the best answer. Uh, so let's see here. Let me minimize this right here and get right into it. So um, also two years ago, let's see if I can get, uh, get going here. Perfect. So uh, very similar to, to Cesar, I've started um, my own uh, webcast, if you will, um, for Dynamo. There's a group that I started at DLR Group. Um, we wanted to bring computation uh, to uh, and, and data and everything, really. Um, a whole bunch of that, all that awesome sauce, right? So uh, we're actually in season two. Um, uh, episode five was uh, uh, given yesterday, um, again, um, at our, our, our newly acquired Quan uh, Henry DLR Group office. So this is my third presentation in 36 hours, and I'm just going to drain the tanks, <laughs> just bring it all. So um, a little bit about Dynamo Next is um, it's very similar uh, to what Cesar's done uh, with the, the San Francisco group, except I've done that internally to DLR Group, um, and then only recently have I began to share that. Um, so you'll see all of season two um, up on my YouTube channel. So like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. So um, I am Ryan Baker Cameron. I'm an uh, architect uh, by trade. I actually have an engineering degree. Um, and then I know um, Cesar because of, of all the things, the wonderful things he's done. Um, I met Kyle uh, last year um, at RTC. Um, I was there for the pre-conference workshop speaking. Um, and then I got ended up with a, a, a RTC pass. Hit it off right away with, with Kyle. Um, just amazing guy. Um, just instant friendship, so it's just absolutely fantastic. So we're going to go over techniques for data-driven design. Um, so I don't have to go over this, you all know me. So a uh, bit of a design technologist, I don't really have that title. Um, project architect by day, data creator by night. Um, the co-founder of Data Streams, it's a collection of sensor-driven data for the built environment. Um, we came up with it about four years ago, so a couple years before um, like Goldilocks and things like that. Um, but uh, unfortunately, funding kind of got cut, and we, we've shifted and moved on. So I, I really am interested in startups. My, one of my other startups I started a couple years back, uh, it's about seven years ago now, is uh, Architect Machines. We're a digital asset management company, right? So you need your scripts to go somewhere so you can share them. So think of like Revit City, but on like steroids. So uh, some people saw this quote uh, early, earlier today. It's design professionals will need to have a basic understanding of what data means for them if they are to succeed. How many of you agree with that? A lot of you, everybody should be raising their hand because that's that's kind of the shift that's happening, right? So we're going to go over um, this presentation. Um, we're going to touch real short on, on data strategy. I know there was a question for Kyle about where do you store all this stuff. I can kind of lay some groundwork, right? But I'm not going to be the IT guy. I'm not going to be your BIM guy. I'm not going to be da, 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 so on and so forth. Um, we probably won't have time for all four examples. Um, I'll probably do the first three. And then uh, something a little special at the end for everybody. So data strategy, what does that mean? Uh, well, first off, uh, why would you do that? You really have to discover your purpose, right? You've got to ask that why. That's Simon Sinek quote. And you ask, find out what your why is. Uh, and that can be as simple as just writing it down, right? Write the title of it down. And then write a little abstract, just like you would for an AU entry or, or what is it about that you, that you want to do with data. Um, throw out a couple hypotheses. Um, really, the scientific method. Who mentioned that? Or you did, didn't you? Yeah, that was perfect. That was exactly perfect. Yeah, scientific method. That's boom. Uh, so, uh, culture is everyone on board. Is there demand for this at your firm? Because otherwise, it's going to die. Culture eats strategy for lunch. It's just not going to go forward if you don't have that. So, um, if you don't have that, how do you create that market demand? Right. So that's going to be up to somebody at the firm. That might be you. Right. 
to take on that task. So um, let me move this real quick. So, oh, perfect. Um, you're always going to have to do that kind of return on investment thing, right? At least at a very basic level, you're going to have to say, if I put in this much time, we're going to get this output, it's going to cost this much, we're going to save this much. You don't need me to explain anything else. There's a bunch of resources at the end, how to calculate ROI, uh, but there's obviously business value there. Data management, that is not data strategy, that is just where you're storing things, right? So um, that's where it requires some digital practice leadership. Um, there's, there's no getting around it. You're going to have to store this, you're going to have to share this. I've been up to this for seven years now with Architect Machines, and we're still learning new things um, about how people store and the little quirks and quicks and everything that they, that they do to, to save it. Um, performance, everybody touched on key performance indicators, both at day to day and uh, during the uh, computational uh, building design conference. Um, ultimately, you'll need to show that strategy is creating higher performance levels, right? And then development. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> it is always going to get better. Hence Dynamo Next, new expanding technologies, next iteration, next iteration. It's a prototyping tool, really. I mean, that's something that you can use and use that script to uh, basically build a new tool with. And uh, it's always a work in progress, always under development. Oops. Next. There we are. So um, I could probably skip this. Um, I will make these resources available the, the best I can. Um, so I get this question asked a lot. What are some examples that you draw inspiration from? Right? So fictional dashboards. Who here love like the Iron Man movie when it came out? I, knew, I didn't even finish the question and my hands were up. Amazing, right? Like in 2008, that just I looked at that and I was like, oh my goodness, why don't we do data visualization for architects, right? I'm strapping on suit or whatever and I, get, I got to see the readouts, my polls, how, how I'm applying, horizon check, all that stuff. So why don't we have that? Oh, this, that was eight years ago, right? So um, I went a little overboard. <laughs> You've got to, right? So uh, passion is, is great. That's when you want to share something, right? It's when somebody's passionate. They're, they're very, they want to share. But when you build the tools that build you, right, that's obsession. And so that's, that's kind of where you want to be. You kind of want to be right between passion and obsess, uh, obsession. So um, that, it's just a fantastic uh, experience. We're going to go over... Three of these, I do have the fourth example. It takes a little while to load it um, uh, because I, I am traveling. There are a couple things locked down on my computer apparently when I travel that I wasn't expecting. So um, I do have backups though. So we'll go over a couple of these. So can you chew Revit, Power BI, Excel, Dynamo, and why not? I give your third presentation in 36 hours <laughs> all at the same time. Um, I think we can, we can uh, go through an anatomy first of a, of a dashboard of how I build these things. So in this example, um, I created a custom uh, background, and I, this is an easy one, right? We should be doing this as architects, designers, engineers. I want to see a visual representation of the rooms in my floor plan, in my building, and see what that all means, right? So I'm going to do room analysis, room by room count, room name, right? So I've got open office, I've got private office, reception storage, you get the idea, right? Rooms are all organized by departments, right? Unless I'm missing something, that's pretty standard. Uh, feel free to chime in if, if you've got some other <clears throat> cool strategy. Um, so then we can start to group those things and say, okay, well, really, storage and mechanical are both part of the mechanical department if that's how you're choosing to do it. Right. How do I minimize this thing here? Give me one second. So room adjacency, probably the most beautiful one. I get the most questions about it because it's just so interesting to look at, right? So I need to know what rooms need to touch which rooms. So um, this, what's running in the background of this is basically saying I need uh, a first qualifier and a secondary qualifier. That first qualifier needs to match, let's say I've got private office, needs to be next to private office, needs to be next to open office, right? So they all have ones, or they all have AAA or whatever that qualifier happens to be. So they all match together and they're all connected into this department. So that's a, that's a way to read that. They'll have a secondary qualifier. If this room and this room and this room are all touching and I can't fit that fourth room and it has priority, that second qualifier comes in and says, I have priority, bump, and then moves that, that uh, slide down the row, if you will. So oops. this is uh, my total contribution. Um, I'm always checking to see if I'm winning or losing of the game of architecture, <laughs> right? Um, am I meeting the client's basic programmatic needs? How many of you are able to check this? 
Right? Yeah, I bet. Well, I, you don't count, Brock. Dang it. Dorofus. Um, he didn't pay me to do that. Um, anyway, uh, we should be doing that. Not a lot of hands went up. What if you could do that like all the time, instantly, always check it, um, whether the rooms are too big or too small. Um, what I like about these pie charts down here, this tells me if I'm winning or losing. Are my fails overwhelming my passes? In this, in this instance, no, not really, right? Those fails might be janitor's closets that are six square feet over. Not a big deal. You're always going to have those fails in the program, right? Um, and, and so I split those out to 10% uh, too small and 10% too big. We can change that. We can add more parameters to that. But I think that's pretty nice. That's pretty basic. We check that constantly. So we've tested on, on uh, projects before. And we want to look at level analysis. What's going on on my levels? I don't want to have to open Revit, Dymo, or anything like that because this is going to be an owner meeting, right, a client meeting. And we need to be able to click through this really, really fast. So I created a kind of a, a cool cutaway, too, that's, that's going to be interactive one of these days. Uh, so let's, you know, let's just do a live demo. Let's just see if I can break stuff here. <laughs> so I'm going to have to move this thing off screen. Oh, I can do that. Okay. Um, let's jump into this, this right here. So what I did um, in Revit was actually pretty simple. Let's get this over, get a keynote manager. I added those two columns. Right? And then with Dynamo, I basically have instant Excel transfer uh, one way or the other. So if I've got 2,500 square feet, oop, not 25,000, um, I'm instantly going to ding. So watch that column. I'll just change it again. Let's see if we can't just blow something up. So I'm expecting a fail right? if I'm now within 10% of what Revit is telling me that room is. So I believe this one's going to change to a fail. The second I hit enter, boom. So uh, we can do that to quite a few of these. Let me change this one down to 2,500. So on and so forth. Get a couple fails in here. Uh, let's go ahead and run this and push that data into the file. Oh, it's trying to uh, run quite a bit of, of information here. So uh, let's see if I can. Oh, you're gonna. We're gonna lose this the second I click run. Um, shoot. So remember, that's gonna turn into 2,000 and whatever I change the other ones to, and then. That will still be a fail. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go ahead and hit run. Right, run through that. Oh, hold on. Do to do. Oh, I want that. Give me two seconds here. So what I love about this is you can you can break stuff and not really worry about it. So boom, now I pulled it in. So um, we can run that one more time, but I'm pretty sure you all believe me at this point. Um, so once we hit save, we can actually load that into our live dashboard, um, hit refresh, uh, do whatever we need to. We can we can do, uh, I could create another uh, a graph here that basically represents, oh, see, my total is just updated. Um, that represents total square footage. I'm not interested um, in, in that for this instance. Uh, if I wanted to create another page, um, I would do that. Uh, but this way I can start to say, oh, hey, um, so how many storage rooms do I have? And click on that and watch it update live. Love that. So I've actually fixed the error in this, and I've never gone back and, and checked it or changed it. Um, so what, what happened the first time with the client is level three said zero. Never thought about it in the Red model because I'm always in Revit. I'm always thinking about other things. I've got tens of thousands of things I need to think about. Popped up here at zero. We turned around and asked the client, do you, do you need storage on third floor? And they're like, well, yeah, I mean, you're the expert. You should know what I want. <laughs> right? How many times has that happened, right? So we were able to check it. It's proof of concept. We we just saved like a nightmare scenario of, of forgetting like ample storage for them on, on third level. So just fascinating that we're able to do all these things. Uh, so we can start to check uh, departments. I'm going to see everything that's going on in open office and give me a representative total of those uh, departments, right? So I can go over here, see reception. I've got one reception room on, on each floor. Good, checked, came out right, um, because again, it's all tied to this Dynamo database um, that just pulls all that information. So let's go to our next. So the question then becomes, so I mentioned I don't have like a readout of just like solid square feet. Wasn't important. What is important to your project success? Because these things are all customizable and that is so awesome, right? I mean, that's just so great. Well, basically, uh, so I read a lot of uh, startup books, too, and it's all about finding that minimal viable product. 
many people have read like a startup book and like maybe Eric Reese's uh, Lean Startup, right? Somebody wanted me that. He did? Oh, well, you're going to read it. Okay. <laughs> okay, you read it. Okay, great. So he talks about uh, creating a minimal viable product uh, and then add features to it um, as you've uh, done your proof of concept, right? So let's do another example here. Cost estimate. This is where I need your attention, Mr. Martin. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Yes, I would like to save changes. Now, like I said, um, I do have a little bit of a problem with this one uh, because I'm a little bit locked down and it refuses to run the script. I'm still trying to figure out why that is. I'm VPNed in. I've tried it with borrowing a license. Um, don't worry, I've got a backup. I have backups to my backup. Oh, I didn't play the video. I'm a little bit worried about audio. So, um, quick minute thirty something. Don't worry if there's no there's no audio. There is in, in the actual video, but basically I'm going to go through here and demonstrate basically a pull down menu, right, for the client. We had our marketing guy in Kansas run this because it's all about making the tool as dumb as possible. I think that's what Jeremy Luther said: make the tool as dumb as possible. So when I go in here. And we say pick the Cadillac option, pick option B, option C, the Yugo. To be able to uh, flip through that, so I go here. I talk a little bit through here, so uh, I do apologize I can't do this live. But oh yeah. So pull down menu, updates, hit save, grabs all that info thanks to Nate Miller's lunchbox, gives me a visual readout of the decision that was made by the client and what it affected live. That was powerful. We want a project because of this, the contributions of this, not just because of this, but because of some contributions of this. Fantastic. Boom. Next next dollar sign, next dollar sign. How does that affect? Let's take that into uh, uh, another visualization. This time, I do need to know square foot and how that's affected. I need to know cost. I need to know savings, right? And I need to know a breakdown of every category. I can do, I can do this example. So let's go in and, and look at that. So as I flip through this and say I want all option B, we can't afford everything else. People talk about big data. I talk about little data, right? <laughs> Our lives are made of a lot of little data and everybody calls it big data. So um, we're, we're looking to uh, change that number to 1.9, but nobody wants to look at it in Excel, right? So I'm going to hit save. Hit refresh at 2.16, it's going to go down to 2.01. There's actually a little bit of change left over, um, discrepancy between the Excel file. But if you notice, all my options give me a readout. The option B for, uh, let's see here, the, the common area is 0.09. For the corridor, is, uh, the option is also option B is 0.72. And then the dorm rooms, which is the dorm room remodel, is 1.21. Now, these are interior finishes. These aren't total project costs. Uh, but we're able to show the client um, the real effects of their design decisions um, and how that affects budget live at the interview level, right? So uh, pretty powerful stuff. Um, we're adding uh, significantly more contributions to this. Um, so we do a lot of CM at risk projects. Who, who does CM at risk projects? You guys never heard of CM at risk? Really? Oh, it's like huge in the Midwest. It's like all we do. It's crazy. Um, so there's something about uh, kind of Cost transparency, I don't know, just being honest, and that sort of thing. Who wants to do that? Uh, so as we get their numbers, we uh, tie all those numbers to the project cost total and see a representation of that. So in this case, doors are 12K. Um, that, that can change. We're going to track all this and then do kind of a, what was the, the clicking of the mouse, uh, tracking almost, right, and see how this thing has changed and expanded and changed and gotten bigger and shrank, and then we can come back and say, Wow, there's a lot of changes here. You can start to zone in with that data and say, there are way too many changes in doors. We do not have a clue. We do not have a bead on, on doors, what's going on with it. You can start to clue in on, on stuff that you never knew to ask about. All right, where are we at? How are we doing on time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Black Rose. So all my projects have cool little code names. It's that color of a Corvette. Check this out. 
Okay. Oh, I don't have the correct So I had Autodesk call in for one of my sessions. Um, it was um, it was on Fractal. So you'll see that's season two, episode one. Um, so basically, I built this uh, script for our, our Africa team, um, gave it, showed them how it worked, handed it off to them. They've knocked it out of the park. We're going to work in, in Africa. Um, fantastic that I'm able to make that kind of contribution to the firm. Uh, very, very happy for the opportunity. Um, but uh, they kind of gave me a call one day and said, um, so we're going to need you to go ahead and stop. <laughs> <laughs> it says that it's going to come up with 1.8 quadrillion design iterations. <laughs> I love to break their software. <laughs> um, so this is very interesting because there's also all this metadata behind it. Sorry, all this met metadata behind it basically telling me all these parameters in a, um, I wouldn't say a JSON readout, but it actually gives a text readout. So I can take advantage of that. I'll show that in, in a minute. Um, but we, how do you filter through 1.8 quadrillion? Well, simple you don't. There's there's some bad options in here. They might meet some, right? But they're not they're not meeting all. Um, so what's interesting about this is this came up with every iteration of this combination that I would ever come up with in a thousand lifetimes. That's fantastic. Because I'll be well yeah, it's fantastic because I'll be able to come back to it someday. But like, no, I made that like four years ago. So the leaders will be movers of data, right? That create uh, enhanced architectural space that elevate the, the user experience, right? Um, so I'll get back to that in just a second. So how do you filter through that? Um, man, I love making these things, um, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so really, um, there were only, you can easily manually kind of figure the ones that aren't going to make the cut, um, but there were still 6,500 options. Um, I ended up manually cutting that file down to like 252. Um, that meet the criteria of, of the realm of possibilities, right? So there's a ton of possibilities here. Um, this just gives me a, a visual readout. So um, I know that there's a height restriction. So I've left a couple in here. I know there's a height restriction of, we'll call it 120 feet. So give me everything that's 120 feet and lower. Give me everything that has 22,000 square feet of office, right? So I've got nine, nine, and one. Nine office options, nine hotel options, one commercial option that's only available. But now I only have one office option, nine hotel options, one commercial option, right? So I need 22,000 square feet of hotel. That's it. Go build that one. That's the only mathematical, mathematically possible combination of the choices that we've narrowed it down to. What'd that take me? I don't know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, because I'm giving a presentation. Fantastic. Go model it. Can you explain that you said that you Brought it down to 250 manually? Yeah, that's me cheating. Sorry. <laughs> that random you just selected 200. It wasn't that random. It was, it was like, oh, yeah, these, these ones are dumb. Like, they were just off the wall dumb. So I, I slipped those out um, of the thousands um, because there was one parameter that, sorry, long story short, there was one parameter that really hung me up, and I'm, and I'm getting rid of it. Um, anyway. Uh, so normally, yeah, it would still work the same. I don't care if I have 252 or 6500 or 1.8 quadrillion. It's going to filter. That's what the program does, right? It's fantastic at it. Um, oh, one thing I didn't know, uh, show was um, you can publish this to web, um, so you can share that with the owner. So let's go ahead and publish the. Which one did I have preloaded here? It's probably the program needs one. It organizes it for you. It, it pushes it off to Azure for you. You don't have to do anything. Who asked the gateway question or the where do you manage all your stuff? Somebody asked that. Yeah, I don't worry about it. Microsoft takes care of that for me. <laughs> we can talk about it. <laughs> but uh, quick question: Are you having an issue with Power BI Pro users being only people that can uh, access your publish? No. No. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to you later. Um, low Calx, man, this one's really cool too, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm running out of time. So um, this one's actually really cool. Um, we have audio. So I do. I, I am planning on making this over again. I'm going to try it, Cesar. I'm going to try to turn on my, my mic here. If everything starts to go haywire, I'll, I'll turn on mute. Test. Test. That is a shame. That is a shame. 
I just did it like echoed and echoed and echoed. Right. What? Yeah, it's gonna echo like crazy. Oh no no no, this won't be cool then. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, with uh, Amazon Alexa, some of you have seen this, right? Like two three. So basically, yeah, that's my setup at home. It's a quad touchscreen monitor. It's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> not a 48 core processor, uh, Dell uh, T7810. Um, but basically, uh, you can once it's on the web, okay, you can kind of do anything with it. Um, there was one guy that kind of hacked the uh, Revit, Dynamo, Alexa, um, which was fantastic. Um, I don't know how to do that, but once it's on web, um, you can actually kind of just have it read back out to you, right? Because you can say, Alexa, go to google.com, Alexa, go to this. Um, so there is quite a bit of programming. I hope to release it and remake this video. But basically, and this took like three takes to do uh, for her to understand. There's a whole bunch of bugs and, and kinks to work out. But basically, I say, how many parking stalls do I have in option B? She reads that back. What else can you tell me about option B? She tells me the height. She tells me the setback. She tells me the square footage. Are you freaking kidding me? Like, I just replaced like 600 people at the firm, if you kind of think about it. I didn't really, because we still need those people. But if you think about it, <laughs> you can edit this, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, there are a couple things like that. I have to, to figure out how to code um, that information in. And then when she calls my phone, I can get her to call the phone. Uh, but I couldn't at this example because this video is so rushed, it's unbelievable. Uh, but basically I say, that's the option I want, call the design team. She uses my phone and calls it, calls the design team. So really need audio for that. I am pulling that video until I can make it better. But imagine, imagine that. Talking to your computer, that human-computer interaction, that degree, is going to be worth its weight in gold like now, right? So that's fantastic to be able to basically just say, hey, I want these options. Or Alexa, design me a building, and I'll I'll pick the best option. I'm still the architect here. I'm telling you what to do. You're just giving it back to me a lot faster and a lot more accurate than than I could ever hope to get back from a human. So, now all your jobs are safe. Don't worry. Um, there's there's always something to do, right? <laughs> uh, is that the end? Oh, um, I do get a lot of extra questions. Holy cow, Power BI is, is amazing, powerful. You can set up relationship tables between uh, different Excel files. You can, it's absolutely mind-blowing. I'd love to be able to go through that. Setting up a database gateway. Further information worth exploring. It's not as difficult as it looks. Um, can it be live streamed? So April 2017 released a live connection um, to some degree. Um, so experiment with that. There's the link above. Um, I get a question of can my data so it'll be edited inside Power BI first. A, you probably have the Excel file open, so why don't you just edit it in the Excel file and hit save and refresh. Um, but there is a way you can enter data. You can make your own uh, table um, that's a column uh, and basically use the data that's already in Power BI, which is coming from that Excel file, and start to manipulate that data inside. You're not making changes uh, to the Excel file, which um, is good and bad because, again, you're probably already in the Excel. Just, just change in Excel. Um, I had this issue come up. Um, every once in a while, I, I will have a column out of the blue um, come in as text, even though it's all numbers. The parameters are set to numbers. So um, here's how you change that to make sure that they do a sum total. No idea why it does that. They're still working on it. Um, will the cost of Power BI change from free? Um, yeah, so remember when like cloud credits from Autodesk were free, <laughs> and then they like got everybody hooked? And then they charge for them, sort of, with the cloud credits. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that's going to change here, too. Um, the Pro version, last time I checked, it's been a little while since I checked, but it was a whopping $10 a month for Pro. So not exactly a huge uh, investment there. Dynamo's free. Power BI is basically free. Um, and they give you a year trial anyway. So, I mean, what do you have to lose? Um, there's a, a lot of other database tools. Um, I know Dave Miller's used Gephi before. Um, we actually have Tableau licenses, the DLR group. That's actually what I got started on. Um, Conrad has Mandrill for Dynamo, just fantastic uh, information there. Tons of resources. We've had Randy uh, Deutsch on the show before for Dynamo Next. He was actually last episode. Um, there's the developer link for, for uh, Amazon uh, Power BI. So it's a huge resource um, in, this, in this presentation. So we're starting to reach the end, almost the end. Was this information useful and cause you to think? Will you put thought into action? 
What's the plus delta? What's the change for you today? Now you've seen some crazy, crazy stuff, right? Raise your hand if you saw something crazy today, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> very nice. So what's, what's that gonna cause you to do? What's, how's that gonna change the way you think and, and can adapt and, and integrate these types of technologies and these, these amazing different resources? So, all right, that's it, thanks. Thanks everyone. Questions in the back. Yes, it'll take a while. <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> it'll take a while. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So there is a trick to that uh, to the floor plan thing. So that is a custom plugin, right? So this is fantastic. Uh, let's just go over the, the floor plan one for now, right? So let me reset everything. So this is. For a small project, this works awesome. I can pretty much keep up with the what amounts to small minor design changes to this. I can zoom in on this. I can start to see, oops, that's not supposed to happen. There we go. I can start to see and, and filter around. That is fantastic. This is the, um, uh, what is this plugin called? Give me two seconds. There's something on my screen in the way. This is the Synoptic Panel by SQL By. So, there's a bit of a process to this one. You have to go to their website, upload a bare bones uh, Revit image, if you will. It'll turn that into a vector graphic, right, an SVG file. And then you go in, you click, and you have to relabel everything. Again, on a small project like this, totally effective. On a multimodal hospital with like a thousand rooms, oh, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to do something different. Um, there is another script that's, that's better for that. Um, I'll include all the scripts that I have. It's, it's a crazy library. Um, and, and please go to Power BI um, gallery for all kinds of reference material. Please don't email me, because I'm just going to point you to that anyway. <laughs> you can email me about anything, but uh, if, it's, if it's Power BI, or uh, I'll probably point you to their website. Dynamo, absolutely. Revit, absolutely. Fantastic. That'll be a great resource for that. Um, what was the other one? This one. Ah, yes. Mm. That was just nice. Hold on, I'm still working on hers. Um, let me see how I did that. So there's a secondary qualifier, right? Um, and then there's the initial qualifier. So the, I guess maybe I didn't explain it the right way. There's a root, right? And I have a first qualifier, and I have another root, and it has the same qualifier. I have a third root, it has a different qualifier. Those rooms are not adjacent. That room's adjacent to somebody else, right? So let's just take the, the second qualifier out of the equation. Uh, as I add more rooms, I need to get that information from the client, what do they want next to each other, and then let this program run and do its thing. So I can always see what, what's uh, adjacent to what, make sure that we're doing it right, I guess, if that makes sense. So it doesn't, okay, I'll show you the Excel file, it'll make sense in, after, after we're done. You got a question? Yeah, so these are really fine examples of how the the trend towards a more artificial intelligence is, uh, is happening in our industry. Are you proposing that uh, intuition will be replaced by this, given the limitation of the human brain to learn and uh, create uh, with comparison with machines? Well, what's your opinion? So my opinion, so the question was, just in case it didn't transfer to the microphone, are we all going to be replaced by Skynet, uh, <laughs> right? By a bunch of Terminator architects that, that end up uh, uh, doing all the work for us with algorithms and stuff. Uh, last time I checked, uh, if it rains outside and I have my computer out there, the computer doesn't know to open up its umbrella. It doesn't even know what an umbrella is, right? So far, um, I have seen some amazing things with machine learning and, and AI. Uh, videos doing some amazing things, um, but they haven't quite cracked that code of creativity. How do I come up with all this? Somebody has to be really dang creative to come up with all this. I have yet to see a computer program actually be truly creative, except the Facebook talking heads thing. That was just creepy. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw that. But, all right, next question. So play back to your question, one of the things that I started looking at when I faced that very question myself was, is we looked at several companies that had done studies 
and thought that they were going to replace massive amounts of their company in the next 10 years due to AI uh, infrastructure growing at such a rate. But one of the other arguments that I found that's not very well read is that markets are underserved in a lot of ways. That the markets could actually be much larger if AI brings on and removes a large amount of the basic production layer of the really simple and mundane and your rates can come down, you'll actually have a larger market because the rates are less like medical, right? How many more people have doctor going to the doctor wasn't so expensive, would you So is architecture an underserved market and can AI actually bring us a larger market, you know, but then you become Walmart. So I don't know. Yeah. Good. Um, I think you all agree that some of the core proofs demonstrated are very valuable for the design exercise and doing further on construction, but um, one of the major issues that I see as of today is that a lot of them requires a lot of setup. Uh, you mentioned the connection with the light side that requires a lot of setup to what? We're not there yet for that. Yeah, I was actually curious. <laughs> what's your opinion in terms of what we need? What, what do we need to make it scalable? What do we need today? Um, what, what technology do we need to build to to achieve that level of scalability in the workforce you've been um, I wish I could answer that. So the, the question kind of goes back to what kind of technology do we need to make all this stuff work? Um, yeah, there's a lot of initial setup, just like building a Revit family is a lot of initial setup, but then once you have it made, you just copy it a bunch of times. And so there is a lot of assembly line um, autonomy to it that's really, really good. Um, wow, what, what technology? Uh, I'll, I'll throw that out to the audience, right? Because it's a, that's such a great, great question. Um, what technology do we need to build uh, in order to scale this? Go ahead, you got some? More users like us? Well, yeah. yeah. Just spread uh, the word? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, what, what did you, Kyle, what did you end with? Uh, how do we increase the, the, the breadth and, and width of, of uh, computational design in the industry? Um, I think sharing things like this um, help enliven the conversation. It helps engage us with uh, leadership uh, to realize this is a very serious thing. This is very powerful. Um, and it's it's embarrassing that we're not doing this now, right? It's, this is so amazing. Kyle? A lot of it's what's possible. It's uh, what, it, what can Dynamo do? What can you do with Power BI? What can you do with Flux? What can you do with all these tools? Because that engages the creative mind of uh, Boom. the general population, just not one person or a handful of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's the, that's the whole population is engaged and more tools emerge. Yeah. Even something like, say you were flipping back and forth between four or five softwares, right? <laughs> that yes. was the least spelled part of the whole, the whole presentation, which is otherwise really amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like Iron Man and then it wasn't for a second. And so it's like, wouldn't Microsoft maybe see this kind of, maybe Microsoft's watching you right now, right? And now, they're going to change the way you flip the tweet. I program. tweet them enough, they never tweet back. <laughs> maybe, they'll, maybe they'll change their OS a little bit to, to assist with flipping between uh, programs. And I know there's shortcuts and things. I'm just saying the more um, realms of people that are exposed to this need, the more little tight workflow improvements and tools that we made from all angles, really. That's Absolutely. the benefit of exposure of what you're doing. You know what I mean? Okay. Excellent. Who owns who owns the data? Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask my own question. Who owns this data? Sure. <laughs> well, technically, we put it up there. We buy it back from them. Isn't that interesting? So I'll come back to that question. Uh, this gentleman right here uh, did have a question, right? I was talking about the, the skill set necessary to be efficient. Skill sets. Um, multiple. We had this discussion at the conference, right? Um, uh, it's a lot but nobody is, is a unicorn, right? So there's no way everybody's going to have amazing Rhino, Grasshopper skills, amazing Revit, Dynamo skills, amazing Power BI, so on and so on and so forth. So um, that, and, yeah, they're, they're, there's ultimately, how, how many of these programs can you be expert at, right? It's tough. I mean, I'm juggling, what, five, six programs simultaneously? How many people out there like me are there? Probably not a lot. Um, in this room, yes, um, but ultimately we need to increase that number, right, a whole lot. 
Um, are kids graduating with these skills? I think they are. I think they're graduating with skills that we don't utilize that aren't these. Fabrication, right? I think we need to leverage that a lot more. Leverage what is available to you. Don't try to force something on the market. Don't, don't try to force those skills because I know what you want, but that might not be available, right? Because it's a seller's market right now for young kids coming out of, out of college. So leverage what you can for the skills. I guess that's my, my answer. Cool. In the back. Um, how long was it in terms of the pain period before it got fun to, to do this kind of stuff? Because in the it's beginning when you were learning, there's a lot of, at least for me, it's like you're going to begin. I love your question. Uh, this stuff is all really painful, and that's where we lose a lot of people, right? Um, so whatever your threshold for pain is, um, the better you'll excel at it, like, right? I mean, you're laughing, but you know what I mean. You, you feel my pain. You, yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, very painful. So uh, a little bit more background. Um, so I, I kind of grew up in a farming community. My parents owned a hardware store. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, for basically my entire life. And so I would uh, stick a merchandise, but there was something that, that they did that helped me, right? So um, a tool would come back and my mom would say, if you can fix this power drill, you can keep it. If you can fix this flashlight, this vacuum, rewire this something, something. I was eight, 10, 14, 16, all the time, assembling bikes, putting things together. So my threshold is very low, right? So I'm very fortunate in, in that, that I felt almost no pain doing this. I, I saw it and I said, I'm going to be Iron Man, right? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. There's nothing. It's because, because I can, because I will, because I must do it. I'm compelled to. Right? So there's, there's almost no threshold. And there'll be something else coming out next year that I'm going to tackle, right? And it will, imagine the stuff I'm not showing you guys. <laughs> it's just crazy, right? <laughs> what do you got? I think if you're, if you're trying to learn something and teach yourself something and you're having lots of pain, Try to find resources where someone's sharing their knowledge and so that I keep going back to the same thing because that's how I got through it. That's how I, why I share. Um, the more you ask questions and the more you share, the more other people will get help out of the same thing. We've all probably experiencing the same thing because there's no one's asking any questions. So that's kind of my recommendation. Was, I was really frustrated at first when there wasn't much documentation on Dynamo. Now there's more than you can ever want and probably still a lot that isn't that. So. And it's, a lot of it has to do with how you define pain, right? Like, so for some people, pain is pain and frustration. For other people, it's letting go of control. And for architects, they're part of them that wants to be in control of their world, right? The, uh, of their palette. But then they come across something as broad as this, and there's no way you can control it. And so for those people, I would almost say it's just about letting go. They're just saying, I'm not walking around the pond, I'm waiting in the ocean. Yep. I just have to have faith that just I'll go. start to do it, man. Just keep pounding rock until you get it. That's that's life. Life's always going to throw stuff at you that you maybe can't handle at that time. But but you experience it, you learn from it, and you get better. Right? Well, so. Just adding to that, because people think I think um, I think it's good if we are controlling the parameters that we're adding to, like as we make try to you know, continue to develop the software that helps us, it's still we're controlling the parameters that we're we're adding and uh, it is still the knowledge and like understanding the client's need and understanding the need for what adjacencies, what rooms need to be close to each other, that this is important. Like this, in the end, it just becomes a tool. Like you're saying, like, you're not going to be able to like, do this in the end. You're going to have to learn how to do it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
um, contractors would love the Costas main script. I mean, just fantastic stuff. Creating products. Cool. Any other questions? One, one more question, if there are any, that we can get. What do you got? Uh, I'm curious, your previous presentation, your presentation, like, um, you guys talked about estimations of, like, the cost and the billing schedule. Like, how accurate is it? And how do you improve those uh, accuracy? Because the project seems very long, and how do you improve accuracy? I get a short answer. <laughs> Architect numbers. <laughs> for me, it's actually handing it off to the people that do cost for a living 24-7. Like we have a whole department that's the science, essentially. It's years of experience. So it's actually farming the data and the metrics from the model or taking quantity take cost. Because like one of the methods they use, they take a PDF and use this little thing called on-screen takeoff, which is like draw a rectangle, it tells you how big something is at scale. So, like, seems so rudimentary, but if I get a good BIM model, I can do that for them. We can validate the information. They can still do on-screen takeoff, uh, but ideally we can get some stuff earlier that they can work with and when the design updates. All right. So I think we're done. I can minimize that. Pull that up. All that says are you can take this over. Oh, yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on, oh, dang it, oh, yeah, oh, bum, bum, bum. you can say that. So, um, so I wrote an article a little while ago, um, you know, I, I'm thinking about changing it up a little bit, I'm thinking about um, uh, maybe uh, adding and, and changes, can I edit this, edit this post, my session, I just, how many people would like to see me and Cesar present uh, at AU together? How many people? Can I get a clap for that? Would that be pretty freaking awesome, right? Okay. So let's let's add that real quick, just because I can. Are you going to come up? How many people? You know, hold on. Let me think. Let me think this through a little bit more, because that's pretty cool. I give away tablets and stuff, so hopefully you sign up. That that's something I do just every every time. How many people would want to come and see me, Cesar, and Kyle Martin speak at AU? Can I get a round of applause for that? Woo! Maybe? No, let's just, let's just add that in there. So if you are heading to AU, why did he pop up and not you? Um, did I misspell your last name? So if you are heading to AU, and I can't talk and talk at the same time. It's because I don't want to. You're not popping up, man. Oh, I'll, I'll add you in a second. So that was kind of a cool thing. So if you're going to AU this year, we have a round table. The class is already full. Sorry, <laughs> but it will feature Cesar, Kyle, and myself. It's already in the system. It's already guaranteed to happen. So it's going to be amazing. I hope to see you there. This will be a fantastic show. It's a roundtable. So um, the session is called Form a Superhero Team, uh, How to Connect People and Do Great Things. How many of you think that's what Cesar does? Forms a superhero team, right? I, yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Right. How many of you think that's what Kyle does? Right? For the Dynamo Yeah. And how many of you think that that's what I do? Right? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's just super crazy that that's all going to happen this year at AU. So talk to your boss. I can probably squeeze you in. Um, I know its seating is limited, but there's no problem with bidding 30 instead of the 25. I've done it before. Absolutely. Um, it'll be a first come, first serve. Some people don't show up. It's crazy. Right? And so you can probably still get in. So. That's it. Let's hit save on this. I'll figure this out. I'll figure this out later. I'll leave that open. I would like to play this video after it's all shut down, if we can. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you, guys. So that's it. Great session. I really enjoy it. Uh, there's ice cream. Should we stick with you? For the bar commute. Oh, baby. Oh, I got what you're doing. Open the bar. You got focus on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there were some online questions that we oh, didn't address. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I, I have to run. Sorry, I didn't leave that's okay, don't worry. Oh, a lot of them are, are recording. Yeah. We'll be recorded, we'll be recorded, we'll be shared.
Thank you. That's just a comment. So there are a couple things. Okay. We can we can fix it. You can have me again. <laughs> How you doing? Awesome.